welcome I am Andrea and this is Beyond the Pink Door and today I'm just going to give you a little catch-up on what I've been up to this week. So if you watched last week's vlog I talked about the chalk and notch fringe dress and I'm wearing it today. I made it from this remnant of fabric that I got from eBay. Just stand up and show you it. So this is it. Stand up just to show you the little hem. So it's got a little dip on the hem, which I really like. And it has nice side pockets. It's got a little belt here that ties around the back. It's got what they call sleeves, but they're just really a gathered cuff and a little, don't know what, we can never remember what this is called. And I've got a button on it. It's got a nice facing up the front here, which I really enjoy the construction of, and a few little buttons. So it's got a grown on sleeve, which just comes to the cuff. And it was a very, very enjoyable make. So I made this last, I started making this last Sunday and I only got back to finishing it yesterday. So I got all of the top of it made. I went, with the instructions and really enjoyed the construction of it. So the facing comes with its own pattern piece for interfacing. So it's just interfaced down the middle. It's not a fully interfaced piece, which I actually really like, and I'm definitely going to be doing that again. So the edge gets folded in and then all top stitch. So there's no overlocking to be seen on the inside and it's all top stitched down so it's a really nice finish I really like that and I really like <laughs> I really like this dress I really like the cuff and it gets gathered in nicely here so it's a double piece of fabric and it's turned in with a fold here and sewn in so again there's no overlocking and what I like about it is I feel very confident that this junction here isn't going to break because I have found with my Tilly and the Buttons Bettine dress, which has the grown on sleeve, I found not with the double gauze version because there is a bit of stretch in that fabric, but I found with the other viscose crepe that this seam breaks. So it's a very curved seam on the bettine and obviously you have to clip it to get it to curve and those stitches are constantly breaking so I've done like a triple stitch on it and I've done two rows of stitching and I'm just afraid that it's going to break and not be able to be fixed again so I liked this in that it comes up straight and then the little cuff is added on so I really like that detail. It's not terribly gathered the skirt isn't terribly gathered to add to the bodice. So what I do when I'm gathering, because I always find it so difficult to get a nice even gather when you hand stitch, and I learned this technique from the Avid Seamstress day dress, is you cut a piece of quarter inch elastic or knickers elastic as my mother used to call it. You cut it to the length of the bodice. So the finished gathered in size. And then I pinned that quarter inch elastic to the side seams evenly and then to the centre front and to the back. And then I stretched it out and zigzagged along and that gathers it in beautifully even. So I think you'll see it's really nicely even gathered around. So I love this technique and I use it as much as I can. And I'm thinking as well that it will give this seam nice stability as well because it's, I made the size six, which I really, actually, it's just a perfect size. I wouldn't like it any bigger and I definitely wouldn't like it any smaller. It just fits really nicely. But because it's got gathers, sorry, it's got darts in the bodice, it's actually quite a close fit to get over your head and over your bust. So I'm glad it has the elastic there now to give it a little bit of stability. And I love the hem of it. I did the length as per the instructions, as per the pattern piece. 
I think with flat sandals it's slightly long but I would like to wear kind of higher wedge sandals with this and this is going to be lovely when our weather picks up again and it's going to be a nice floaty cool dress I feel. We have horrendous weather here at the moment so I'm wearing this indoors it's really comfy. I think that wearing it outside on a windy day would be catastrophic. I think I'd be I'd be holding it down but no it's really really nice. I'm glad I started I'm glad I made it from this fabric to test it out. I just squeezed it out. I had to put a seam in the back of it but it's absolutely lovely. I'm definitely going to make more of these. So this is the only completed make from this week. I also cut out, I get my mannequin over, I always cut out another Patty Do Emily dress. So the one with the little twist here. I've had this jersey, this viscose jersey in my stash since the Knitting and Stitching show last November and I've had a metre and a half of it and I keep wondering what will I make with it. So I'm doing a pattern test this week which I can't show you. That's my only other completed make <laughs> and I cut it out of this so I had enough to make the dress. So I cut the two of them out and made them and this I think is going to be really lovely. So I haven't finished the neckline yet or the sleeve or the hem. So I'm keeping that too because this week I eventually bought a cover stitch machine and I have been looking for months. <laughs> um, I've done my research and really I wanted to get an industrial one because I just love an industrial sewing machine. I love the, I enjoy the speed of them and I enjoy the heavy duty-ness of them. So I had hoped to get an industrial one, but um, I just can't afford it at the moment. So I bought a Janome 2000 CPX and I bought it from Tyso. And the reason I bought it from Tyso was I bought a reboxed version, which was at a discount. And I am really looking forward to get that. I should have that maybe Tuesday, Wednesday this week, possibly, hopefully. <laughs> um, I'm going to do some looking on YouTube to see how am I going to use one because I've actually never physically seen one in front of me. And so I'm going to do my research on how it actually works. And I know that Alex of Gingerhead & Co has a load of tutorials on how to use a cover stitch machine. So I'm going to start watching them as I'm sewing now during the week. So I cannot wait for that to arrive. I am just so excited. It said on the description of it that it's semi-industrial. So I don't know what that actually means, but yeah, can't wait for that to arrive. It's going to be like Christmas. So I am hoping over the next couple of months as well to, well, this was the plan for this year. <laughs> this wasn't knowing all that was going to go on and how it was going to affect my business and my income. But the plan this year was to upgrade my industrial sewing machine and get an industrial overlocker because the dresses that I sew for work are, are quite heavy and parts of them are really too heavy for my domestic um, overlocker. So I am going to buy uh, an industrial and actually there's not a huge amount of difference in price. It's just space, I suppose. The industrial overlockers are in and about the same price. Actually, some of them are cheaper than the domestic ones, but they do take up an awful lot more space. But I do have a lot of space in my work room anyway. So. And I've also been looking at upgrading my flatbed sewing machine. It's 15 years old and it is actually working beautifully, but the new version has a light over the needle, like your domestic one, and it also has an automatic bar tack and a thread cutter, which I would really, really like. I have to admit I would like the light the most because I sew a lot of black fabric and you know what it's like when the bulb blows on your domestic. It is so difficult. And I've bought so many lights over the last while to shine on the fabric, but they just do not get into the area that I want. And I'm really struggling, especially when it comes into winter and I'm sewing in not great light. I'm really struggling with black and black seems to be one of the most popular fabric colors in the Irish dancing dress 
design so so yeah that's my my plans and i'm still hoping <laughs> that these plans will go ahead so on a fabric front this week i got um i got a delivery just from so over at london i have been looking for the last year for prints in lemons <laughs> and i got it and every time i saw this beautiful fabric it was sold out so minerva had it recently popped it up on instagram i went on almost straight away and it was sold so i thought i'm never going to get this i've seen it on some etsy pages and the just the shipping has been too expensive and then there's the possibility of some duties so i thought no i'm going to find it eventually and i just popped onto the sew over it website last weekend i think it was and um there it was and it was in stock i couldn't believe it and i just love it i love the little flowers in it and it's got a navy background now i did think it was black but i think navy is a bonus it's not so harsh so i can't wait to make something out of this i got two meters it's a stretch cotton so there's a really there's actually a really nice amount of there's quite a bit of stretch in it it's so vibrant i absolutely love it so i'm thinking of making possibly because i think this needs to be some sort of a nice little sundress i'm thinking of making the nina lee q dress which i haven't made yet so the cold shoulder version or i actually think i would leave out the little sleevey bits i just like this part of the dress and i think i would possibly put a slightly fuller skirt now not a gathered skirt but i think i would probably put some pleats maybe some double pleats into the skirt and i like the buttons going down the front i think that's really really cute or we have this other pattern myself and my daughter bought this pattern just before and we were we were kicking ourselves really to be honest we bought this pattern the day before the so over it uh summer dreaming ebook came out we bought this stylark pattern so it's almost identical to the lovely so over it dress with the shearing at the back of it this was just exactly what my daughter had been looking for and we went on the stylark website because i know that they do really small sizes and generally she needs the smallest size and this just ticked all the boxes of everything that she wanted and then now we do love the stylark patterns and we bought this in a multi-size so that i can make a size as well but i really 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 liked the so over at london ebook but um when we had this pattern i didn't see the point in buying it because the only other pattern that we really liked was the denim jacket um, because I have lots of wrap skirts and yeah so anyway we're going to hopefully well we're going to make one of these she's already cut out a top so we're just going to test the top to see how it comes together and we're making it out of a lovely cotton fabric so she has it all oops, she has it all cut out it's a little spotty cotton fabric we bought it a couple of weeks ago so it's a navy spot on a white background and I think that's going to be very cute so I'm humming and hawing whether to make this dress from my lemon fabric uh, again I wouldn't gather the skirt it would just be too bulky in this but I could possibly pleat it so I'm betwixt and between but I think that or my favorite mccall's pattern with the dippy skirt i'll pop it a picture i can't think of the number <laughs> and while i was on the website i picked up this little remnant for my daughter to make possibly one of those tops and there was only half a meter left and it's a navy broder anglais fabric with like a creamy embroidery on it so they only had half a meter and I had to pick it up. I knew we'd squeeze something out of it. So she really, really likes it. She didn't even know I ordered it. So I think that's going to be really cute. And the other sewing news is I got the Love Sewing magazine during the week. We had to go into Galway, which is our nearest city, um, because my daughter had to do her driver theory test, which she passed. Yay! <laughs> she was so excited. So we went, um, we went around a few of the shops 
Now it had been our first time in Galway since sometime at the beginning of March, so we didn't honestly know what to expect. So we just, yeah, we did a little walk around and one of the things I wanted to get was the Love Sewing magazine because I have really missed getting that. Now I have bought it online, but I wanted to get the most up-to-date copy. And I really like this pattern that's in it. So it's the Vogue 8379. And the lovely Emily Hallman has made this a few times. And hers look absolutely gorgeous. I love the little gathers that are at the front there. I love these little gathers. It's a jersey pattern. And I think that might be the perfect pattern for some of the jerseys I have in my stash at the moment. So I think that's gonna be one of my, possibly one of my next makes, even though I do have a top and more shorts cut out and I definitely want to make more of these. So it's going to be one of my next few makes. And funnily enough, when I was in Galway shopping, I picked up some gardening gloves, as you do, and they said on the packet there was a free snips or free scissors on it. And this was, <laughs> this was what they had on it. So this is a lovely thread snips. Maybe it has a use in gardening. I don't know, but this came with my gardening gloves. So I was quite, a, quite pleased with that addition. <laughs> random. Now the reason I haven't actually got an awful lot of sewing for myself done this week is that I've been quite busy, well, work-wise. Well, it's a funny kind of a work-wise. I don't know where my business stands at the moment, um, my Irish dance dresses, because um, no Irish dancing competitions can be planned at the moment because they'd be a bigger number for an indoor gathering. So it's all very much up in the air at the moment. So anybody who has a dress is selling it because they haven't been able to wear it for the last couple of months. So my orders are all postponed at the moment and I honestly don't know when my business will actually be able to start up and running again. So I am looking at ways of diversifying and just finding other ways of bringing in some work <laughs> so that I can put my embroidery sewing machines on basically because I'm very I'm very worried about them just sitting there unplugged. So I I just I just did a little bit of networking during the week and this is what you have to do when you're self-employed. This is the joys. And I feel that as a self-employed person I constantly have to almost reinvent myself, reinvent my business, find ways of bringing some work in. And now, to be fair, this time of the year, say July, August, I wouldn't be busy anyway. I would have been busy for the last couple of months and I would have generated enough income to get me through the two months during the summer where there's no dancing going on, there's no making going on. But obviously we haven't had that. So, so yeah, my business is very much up in the air. But anyway, I decided that I would just... Um, put myself out there a little bit and just tell people that I am available again for some sewing. So during the week I covered cushions for a caravan, <laughs> which I haven't done for years. And I have to admit, I really don't mind what I'm doing as long as I'm sewing and as long as I'm generating an income, I don't mind. And I quite enjoyed them. Um, I will pop in some pictures. I actually thought they'd still be here today for me to show you on this blog, but they were collected yesterday. So I have some before and after photos and I'll pop them in. Now I made them with um, an elastic at the bottom of them so that they can take them off easily for cleaning because they have a small child and they just thought it would be handy that they might be able to wash them. So their original covers didn't have any way of taking them off. They were completely sealed, no zips, no nothing, all buttoned through. So we left the original covers on, they washed them before I did it. And I made some slipover covers with some elastic on the bottom of them. And yeah, they were collected yesterday and they were dead pleased with them. And the other thing I did during the week was I embroidered um, t-shirts. So I used to do this before with another smaller sewing machine that I have. And I started on my smaller sewing machine. In fact, I'm going to bring my phone now down to my sewing room and show you rather than me just talk about it. So I'm in here in my sewing room and this is the first embroidery machine I bought. And I bought this, I think, possibly 
oh, 12 years ago. It's the Brother P or 620. And I bought it at the Knitting and Stitching Show one year. And such a super, super machine. So it is a six thread sewing machine and it's got the little computer screen here. And this was my first delve into any sort of digitizing when I got this machine. And what I used this for for the first couple of years was basically uh, embroidering names on Christmas stockings, which was brilliant. I used to bring it to craft fairs. We used to put it into the back of the car and bring a box of ready-made Christmas stockings and embroider children's names on them. So it was absolutely brilliant for that. And people, people used to love watching it. So now I used to think it was such a fast, fast sewing machine until I bought the big guns over there. So you have to hoop your t-shirt if you're doing t-shirts. Now I do t-shirts and I'd have also done blankets in the past for children. So newborn babies will have their name and date of birth, things like that. It's a nice little keepsake. So while the t-shirt is on it, I have to wait for the t-shirt to finish before I can take it off and rehoop the next one. So I started using this uh, whatever day I started doing the um, t-shirts. And then I thought, I have hoops for my other industrial machine. So I'll just go over and show you that one. So when I bought this machine, it came with all the hoops, even though I honestly never thought I would use them. So they come in a big variety of sizes. I bought it specifically to use the big frame, which is here now in the corner safely. And when it got delivered, all the hoops came with it as well. And I just, I really, really thought, oh, I'm never going to use those. And I didn't even know how to attach them. So I spent a good bit of time a few days ago figuring out how to actually attach them. And they come with these extra little additions onto the, the frame guide. And the beauty about it was it came with two of each hoop, apart from the large size down there. So again... This was super news and I was absolutely delighted to be able to change the machine around to actually do the t-shirts. So as one t-shirt was on the machine, I was able to hoop, hoop the next one ready and it made it just so efficient. And this machine is much, much faster. Now I had plugged out this machine because we had um, thunder and lightning recently and I was just so afraid of some sort of power surge or something like that. So when I plugged it back in a few days ago, I realized that it seems to have reset to factory settings <laughs> and all the screen is now in Chinese, which um, I'm going to have to figure out. But I'm so used to using the machine now anyway, that I know what all the prompts are when it comes up on the screen. So that was an interesting thing. So I had a very varied sewing week uh, this week. I did quite a few t-shirts. Um, here they are finished, all ready to be delivered today because they're reopening tomorrow. So they're for the Podumna village, which is in my local town, Portumna. Um, I'll leave a link in the description box for them. Their website is lovely. It's basically like a little holiday village of pods. So it's tucked away in the center of Portumna. It's really popular for tourists. It's really, really popular for hen parties. And I hope possibly during the week I might get in there and do just a little vlog of the place because it really is the cutest place. It has super reviews. The owners are great hosts. They're super friendly, super nice and very, very helpful. I've known them for years. So I was thrilled really that they actually asked me to embroider their t-shirts because they're re reopening tomorrow. And I also made them some face masks and they've got their logo on them as well. So they are all ready for delivery today for reopening tomorrow. So that is a little insight into the week I've had. My other sewing machine is just sitting there at the moment. That still has its large frame on it. And this one actually didn't come with the other frames. I think I actually, when I bought it, I didn't want the extra frames because I just thought that they'd never be used and they were an additional cost. So whereas they were obviously included in the price of 
this one. So it was great to get that up and running during the week and I'd like to get the other one up and running as well next week with just something or other because I'm just, yeah, I am worried about them just sitting here doing nothing. So thank you ever so much for watching and hopefully during the week I will do an unboxing of my cover stitch machine. So thank you for watching. Bye bye. See you in the next video.